Hi, I'm Regina Brown Wilson, Executive Director for California Black Media. And thank you for joining us for the Coalition of Black Excellence Voters Education Series. Tonight, we have with us the Honorable Sebastian Milley Thomas, former representative of the 54th District in Los Angeles and the director of the California Policy and Research Institute. Thank you, Sebastian, for being here with us. Uh, let's just dive right in. We're going to talk about the different propositions um, and we're going to just, uh, you know, just start right now with Prop 17. Let's look at voting rights. And what this um, measure would do is rest uh, restore voting rights upon completion of prison terms for parolees. So can you tell us a little bit about it and how, how our community would be affected uh, if this does or does not pass? Yeah, given that we're overrepresented among, relative to our population, uh, we're about 6% of the state's population, 30% of the state's prison population. This would uh, be a major win for African Americans who have completed their time. The movement is a part of the Times Done movement, which says when you uh, paid your debt to society based on a criminal conviction, that you should not be penalized even further in terms of reintegration into society. Uh, those who have been incarcerated are uniquely impacted by government. So Proposition 17 says you can vote now. Under current law, uh, primarily that which came out of the three strikes era and shortly before, it, you, you cannot vote if you are on state or federal parole. You can't vote in state and local elections. That's really discriminatory, it's unnecessary, it doesn't do anything for anybody, and it makes it harder to reintegrate into society. Oh, you just said something that sparked my attention here, though. So you said if it's a federal crime, so if you, if you still are doing something as a federal crime, even if this passes, would that still prohibit you from being able to vote in a state election or just federal? You, you would be able to vote in a federal or state election. Currently, if you are on any form of parole, you cannot vote. So this would make it so that state or federal, you can vote in the California election. As you know, uh, voting is controlled by the states and the states alone. Okay, and so we can override that from a, just making sure that we're, we're able to override whatever the federal rules are. Correct, there is no federal prohibition on voting if you are um, under parole. All voting rules are set by uh, state governments. Perfect, thanks for that clarification. And we look here, there's no register opposition, so it seems like California is in line possibly with this. Um, now let's move on to Proposition 18. Um, this is the voting age. So this measure would allow any U.S. citizen of age residents of the state that would be 18 years of age at the time of the next general election to vote. Can you tell us the way it's kind of written here? Seems a little bit confusing, but tell me what that means. So that means if I'm 17, I can register. And if I'm 18 by the time November comes around, I can vote. Yeah, um, 17, currently you're pre-registered to vote. So you could vote in a primary election. So in 2020, you could, if you were be 18 by November, you can vote in the, you could have voted in the uh, March primary, presidential primary election. Uh, this is being done to encourage people to learn about the civic process as early as possible and to know that they have a place in it. A lot of people don't vote when they're young. Uh, if they vote at all, they vote when they're older and they miss out on a lot of things and there's very low turnout. So greater Pacific, this is a part of greater civic participation and uh, encouraging younger people to be a part of the electoral process. So 17 years old, as long as you're by, um... By the general election. By, by the, the general, general election. election. So 17 year olds will be able to help decide primaries? Yes, that's what this is. Oh, wow. Okay. And they're already pre registered, so. Okay. And this also looks like there's no registered opposition against this and pretty much seems like it's supported by the state legislature and civic organizations. Yep. Um, Prop 19 takes us to Prop 19, ACA 11, the Home Protection of Senior Citizens. Um, act. Tell us a little bit about that proposition. Yeah, that just uh, is a way to encourage greater investment in residential real estate. It's sponsored by the California Association of Realtors and some 
um, uh, of their allies. So you would say the housing lobby, if you will, uh, is opposed by local governments because there will be a slight revenue loss to local governments. Um, in the aggregate, I think it's in the hundreds of millions, not billion dollars. Um, so it's, it's kind of an arcane way of calculating whether or not somebody gets to keep uh, their property uh, tax limitations when it's when they transfer the residents to a child or grandchild or when they move counties that's what that's about so how will this how will this impact families that are you know leaving property to their loved ones their their children um, if they if they move into those homes that means that they get to keep the same property tax base that their parents and grandparents had yeah right but so if they don't is this really a, a way of saying hey we want you to kind of sell it or you or you or not sell it but is yeah, it there would be an incentive to sell it because if you don't make it your primary residence you would uh see a property tax act it, uh, upon the uh the uh, transference Oh, so, okay. So people, I'm not saying this, but would we see people losing maybe inheritance and family wealth? There's certainly be an incentive to sell um, uh, by the, uh, the heir, if you will. So for African-Americans who've had uh, multi-generational households, that'll be an open question for, for them to consider. Um, uh, it would arguably help older homeowners in the short term and their children their grandchildren, it's kind of up in the air. Uh, local governments um, would lose revenue. So what about if, um, and I'm sorry to just bring this up again, but what about if someone moves? I know that I've seen the commercials where people are saying, hey, this is gonna help if someone needs to move and, and you're a senior and you get to transfer your property tax rate. So if you bought it, once again, at that lower property tax rate and say, I wanna now move closer to the beach or wherever. How does that help? Is, is that what the is that what local government is saying they don't like because people will be able to move into communities and not be able to support maybe elderly needs, obviously, i.e. hospitals and roads and all the things that are necessary? Is that is, is that what you're hearing is one of the considerations of people being concerned about? Yep, essentially, that's the, that's the argument. Okay, great. Well, looks like they also don't have registered opposition, but also I, I'm assuming that that those local local governments government. local government do oppose formally. Okay, I would put that as a note. Okay, they formally have opposed it. And I, since we're sliding through here, we're going to Prop 20, a tougher uh, on parole property crimes DNA testing for some inmates. So what does Prop 20 actually do? Yeah, Prop 20 is sponsored by uh, retail businesses and law enforcement, which is seeing a, a substantial increase in uh, property theft uh, after uh, some a few laws lowered the uh, property uh, penalty the penalties for property crimes primarily theft uh, because those who are uh, thieving if you will uh, of small goods know that there's a threshold in which they have minor infractions they're not even, they're barely misdemeanors um, it would it goes in a different direction than the state has been going with respect to criminal justice reform, uh, and it raises a lot of issues as African Americans are hassled a lot over uh, relatively trivial crimes, and sometimes we end up dead because of our interactions with law enforcement, uh, or substantially traumatized because of uh, what what occurs in those everything from the mall cop to a, a law enforcement officer again, at higher rates than our population suggests we should be um, impacted by things. Uh, the, uh, op the opposition or the criminal justice reform community, the proponents are retail business owners and law enforcement. Okay, great. Um, and that brings us to Prop 21, rent control. This we saw on the ballot, um, what was that, four years ago? and it was defeated four years ago. What do you see for rent control this time around? Same argument, statewide rent control gives local governments the authority to enact uh, uh, more uh, or broader uh, types of rent control on uh, residential properties. The public mood is shifting because of the pandemic. 
Um, African Americans uh, have a substantial base of the rent and uh, arguably uh, would be uniquely impacted by this. The, uh, the opposition to the argument are property owners, corporate and individual property owners, who say that rent control has the perverse effect of actually incentivizing property owners to raise rents, to get the maximum rent because they don't believe, I mean, by law, you can't raise the rent much after, thereafter. So uh, toss up question, a lot of people are hurting right now. It's a different argument than previously about rent control. And so do you see people on both sides of the aisle on this? Um, do you see social justice organizations and then um, civil rights organizations kind of trying to battle out what this looks like? Uh, you, you have yeah, I mean, it's just different arguments. It's just different arguments. I, it, 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 I think this is, this is going to come down to one sensibilities about the pandemic uh, more than anything because so many people are hurting a million people in LA County unemployed or uh, another couple million underemployed, uh, attitudes shifting, people moving out of cities, uh, the botched COVID response by the federal government. So it's less about the underlying issue of rent control where it started um, and more about how do you care for your fellow human being. And, and, and that's just not yet, it, it's not clear how it'll work out, but African-Americans are uh, in all kinds of places on this and, and it affects us in different ways, positively and negatively. Great. Prop 22, looking at Uber and Lyft, independent contractors. We know that there was a huge um, debate, uh, what, a year ago around AB5, um, the threat that um, the tech companies put on play to say, hey, if you go through with AB5, we will put $110 million behind a ballot initiative to overturn it. And I think we're all seeing that in the commercials and our social media feeds. So tell us a little bit of behind what you think is going on with uh, Prop 22. Well, Prop 22 uh, is uh, deals with whether or not someone is an employee or an independent contractor in gig-based work. Uh, so from the transportation companies to the food delivery companies to uh, things like uh, high, uh, uh, handy, tidy, uh, task rabbit and the like, and uh, how people are on demand. The, the the tech companies say that they are digital platforms. The state government says it believes they are employers because of a, a test uh, on whether or not they're employees or not. It's a three or four part test. This proposition is worded as such. If you vote yes, status quo gig work is gig work they're independent contractors if you vote no that means that gig workers and tech companies that partner with gig workers they don't employ them currently they uh then become employees the tech companies say that they're gonna have to lay off a lot of people if they become employees that they can't afford it um labor unions and consumer groups and some uh, legal uh, authorities believe that gig workers should be considered employees of the organizations whose platforms they work on. Okay. And let's just go right down to 23, kidney yep. dialysis clinics. Um, restrictions on treatment and facilities, new rules for operation. So this is another one that we've seen before and didn't pass the last time, but you know, maybe you can help explain a little bit around the kidney dialysis um, proposition where people are gonna start seeing those commercials and try to figure out what does this mean? Yeah, so a yes would mean that you have more staffing at dialysis sites and it's regulated by state law. A no would mean that you believe the dialysis is fine as it is and you encourage people to work it out in private transactions. The proponents are labor unions that want to organize the workers at dialysis sites and provide for a, uh, um, uh, a 
higher wages for the employees that work at dialysis sites. The opponents of the dialysis operators and many organ healthcare providers because they are concerned that that's gonna raise costs and make operations more difficult. Um, for African-Americans, we have a lot of people that get dialysis. Ar arguably, it should be about quality and raising the cost by virtue of this complying with regulation um, will change what quality looks like for patients. That's an objective fact. Um, so that's the that's the real question there on uh, proposition. Um, but people are paying for this through insurance, or are they paying it this out of pocket? Uh, primarily, uh, nearly exclusively through insurance. Okay, so insurance companies are probably also not okay with this. Uh, they are not, and some insurance companies own dialysis clinics. Ah, okay, it's good to know, but. The people who have put this on the ballot, unions and healthcare workers. Yep. All right. Um, Prop 24. So uh, Prop 24, it protects consumers, at least that's what they say on their ballot initiative statement. Um, it protects private information from being distributed without your knowledge. Um, business groups uh, oppose it. Consumer groups support it. Can you, make help, can you help us make sense of it? Uh, yeah. Business groups support uh, I think business groups actually oppose this tech business opposes it um, individuals and some some community organizers and elected officials support it this is an attempt of a uh, of an individual who wants to push consumer protection to continue to stand up more of them and to examine how pervasive uh, the use of data is and what Californians should come to expect with protecting their data. That's really the question. It's so complicated. You can't really say it in short order. So more data protections is a yes vote. Uh, existing data protections or less is a no vote. I don't think we're going to see a lot less because the consensus is becoming that there need to be very, very stringent protections on data with data breaches and the like. The question is whether or not this is it, whether or not it should be done in the legislature versus uh, a vote of the people, as is common with many of the initiatives we've discussed already. And is this being backed by any one major person who put this on the ballot? Yeah, uh -huh. uh, I can't remember the individual's name. A wealthy individual is the primary bank roller for this. Okay. And then that leads us to Prop 25, cash bail system for defendants in California. And this one will be really interesting for you to kind of explain to us because I think, I, I thought this was already settled in the legislature, but it seems like it's coming back again. So I yep. thought we got rid of money bail in our system a couple of years ago. So tell me a little bit about who's put this back on the ballot and what's the difference? Why are we still hearing about this now? Yeah, the, the, the uh, bail companies who wanted to who did not like the end of cash bail, put this on the ballot. So a no vote means cash bail exists, the old system where essentially you're penalized, you have to stay in jail and prison for being poor and people have to take on usurious amounts of debt um, to get someone out. Uh, the uh, end of cash bail, uh, which would be a yes vote, would replace the bail system, which is an arbitrary system that's just administered if you have bail attached by a magistrate, a judge, with a risk-based system, and then uh, uh, remove the financial incentive to keep people incarcerated, even, even if it's pre-trial, because this is all pre-trial, as you know, um, before someone has been sentenced, when they're accused, but before someone has been sentenced. So that, that's why we hear about it is because the, the bail companies, some of whom are very wealthy, uh, put it on the ballot. That's a feature of our direct democracy. It allows you to put things on the ballot that you don't like if you have enough support, but usually if you have enough money. Right. So basically, if we look at this one, a yes vote means... Keep, uh, get rid of cash bail, replace it with a, a risk-based system. A no vote means keep cash bail. 
When we say risk-based system, I know that you just explained it, but I want to make sure that we kind of like are saying it in plain language. Risk-based system means some AI tech type of technology that now doesn't go to a judge, kind of goes into a lottery, and if you get it, you get it. You it's, a it's a survey-based system based on the crime, the circumstances, and what the the likely uh, the likely outcome is for someone. Uh, to reoffend in a uh, or escalate their offenses, so that if you have a a lower level nonviolent crime that still requires someone to appear before a judge or go to trial, then that person would not need to be in the cash bail system. Whereas if you have a violent crime, then you would see that person um, have a higher score for likely risk, and then um, be kept in custody because they are likely to offend according to their behavior patterns, the circumstances of their uh, initial arrest. Okay, great. Well, I think we were able to get through all of the ballot initiatives and I hope that, you know, the, the folks that are watching here and watching this um, education series learn a lot are able to go back in and dig into anything that they didn't understand. And Sebastian, where can we find more information if you just need more information on this? Yeah, uh, you can look us up at social media, at CalPRI, at Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. And then our website is www.calpri.org. And it's really been a pleasure, again, to work with you, Regina, and the uh, Coalition of Black Excellence on this uh, perspective on the, the uh, ballot in California. Well, thank you again. I enjoy every I enjoy hosting these uh, education series, and I hope that everyone has learned so much. And once again, one more time, Sebastian, where can we find more information, just in case uh, you know anyone is looking for more info? Calpri.org. Thank you so much.